Scottish First Minister Hamza Youssef has resigned just days after he torpedoed a coalition with the Green Party by ditching a target for fighting climate change. Youssef gave an emotional speech today, but his time in power was rocky and short. From finance scandals to a change in hate crime laws, we're looking at some of the key moments leading to his resignation. Rather than face a no confidence vote, Scotland's leader, known there as the First Minister, said his goodbyes. After spending the weekend reflecting on what is best for my party, for the government, and for the country I lead, I've concluded that repairing our relationship across the political divide can only be done with someone else at the helm. Hamza Youssef was the youngest person in the first Scottish, Asian and Muslim to hold the office since it was created in 1999. What led to this moment today was his derailment of a coalition with the Green Party that followed a spat over climate policy. Scotland had pitched itself as a global climate leader by setting a goal of slashing carbon emissions by 75% by 2030, one of the most ambitious targets in the world. Youssef's pro-independence government, the Scottish National Party scrapped the target outright after admitting they were not on track to meeting the goal. He then abruptly ended the power sharing agreement with the Greens, embarrassing the party's two government ministers. I clearly underestimated the level of hurt and upset that caused Green colleagues. For a minority government to be able to govern effectively and efficiently, trust when working with the opposition is clearly fundamental. I think we're all very sad to see that working relationship end. But on a political level, the First Minister made a political decision, and this is the inevitable fallout from that decision. Yusuf would have likely fallen later this week when motions of no confidence came up for a vote. That's because Yusuf's Scottish National Party has been severely weakened from a campaign finance scandal to divisions over transgender rights. We've got a piece of legislation that will be enacted and implemented in a way that is absolutely balanced and make sure it absolutely protects people in their freedom of expression, but guards people from, as I say, that rising tide of hatred we've seen far too often in our society. The expansion of Scotland's hate crime legislation included protections for transgender people. It was hailed by LGBTQ groups, but was attacked by critics like author J.K. Rowling, who said the move would stifle free speech. Yeah, we should not be criminalizing people saying common sense things about biological sex. Clearly that isn't right. We have a proud tradition of free speech and I think it just shows whether it's the SNP or the Labour, these are the wrong set of priorities for the country. Support for the Scottish National Party declined after that legislation passed, making transgender identity a protected characteristic, even though the same protections weren't given to all women. Overall, a tumultuous time for Hamza Youssef with just over 400 days in office. Instead of fulfilling his promises to reform the NHS, ease the cost of living crisis and improve rural housing, Mr Yousaf became mired in the culture wars and turned Scotland into an Orwellian land of thought crimes. Sheesh, they're harsh in the UK. A leadership contest will be held to select a replacement, but in the meantime, Yousaf said he will continue as First Minister until a successor has been elected.